Hi there. Thanks, David. Thank you all. Well, uh, we've been talking about AI a lot during Collision, so let's talk a little bit more and show also. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, David, your team is working in this new frontier of AI and robotics. And can you tell us uh, about BrainCorp and what you all do in this new world? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much, Danny. Uh, so my name is David Finn, uh, CEO of BrainCorp. At BrainCorp, we are a software company that powers autonomous mobile robots. In fact, I brought a little video to show everyone, uh, a little AI to, uh, you know, AV to uh, help you understand what we do. Uh, so our company is involved in autonomous mobile robots that help in commercial public spaces. We got our start in commercial floor cleaning. So our robots go up and down the aisles, uh, helping to clean the floors in retail stores, shopping malls, airports, hospitals, etc. cetera. Um, and we've really gotten a ton of traction specifically in the retail space. Um, and so from that start in robotic floor care, we've really migrated into also providing shelf help through autonomous mobile robots. So while the robots are going up and down the aisles, cleaning the floor, they're also looking at the shelves, identifying out of stocks, making sure the planogram is set correctly, making sure that the price labels are set correctly, really helping retailers create a clean environment and a well-stocked environment. So what, what are the key problems you're solving right now in the field when, when a retail uh, uh, looks for you and uh, asks for your, for your help? Uh, what kind of problems do you solve? Yeah, so we solve these problems uh, that retailers are really facing when it comes to labor shortages. Uh, so one of the things that we find in the industry is that it's really hard for the retailers to find workers. Um, and so the way that we can really help augment these problems is through autonomous mobile robots that can clean the floors, can check the shelves. These are jobs that are, in the robotics industry, we call dull, dirty, and dangerous. Um, the kind of roles that are really hard to fill um, for humans, but they're easy for robots to automate. So those are the problems that we're specifically, specifically solving, both in the retail space as well as in other commercial environments. Well, I guess we have a video. Uh, I'm not sure if they will be able to show, but let's keep talking and then we'll see. Not a problem. Um, you have a model of developing the focus on oh, the video. Yeah, so hopefully that provides a good uh, illustration of what I was describing. But basically, we, we are the software provider that empowers these robots to autonomously navigate in their environment. Really, the magic behind our technology is that uh, it learns by demonstration. So a user in the retail environment or in that commercial environment can teach the robot what's, what it's supposed to be doing. And then the robot can take that intention. And every time it runs, it's observing its environment understanding, you know, are there new obstacles in the way, and it combines its intention with what it sees and what it senses in the environment, and can improvise and, and really achieve that task autonomously. And uh, as I mentioned in, in this video, it shows the robot really doing these two functions in a retail store, both cleaning the floor, as well as helping to make sure that the execution of the shelf is done in a, in a really a consistent manner uh, across a retail chain. And you're, you're focused on developing the software, and you have partners, uh, uh, partners that uh, manufacture the robots, right? This is the model. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, one of the things that we find in terms of helping commercial environments adopt robots is that we want to provide them with the best of breed solution, right? So we consider what we do to be best of breed in software, but as a software company, we know there's so many more ingredients to making a commercial application. So we partner with companies that are excellent in manufacturing machines, excellent at selling and servicing those machines. Um, so really it's about combining not just the technology, but also those business processes and that business expertise in order to provide the customer with a really robust solution. And you also have to bring a friendly interface in the field, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, our focus um, is really on those open to the public commercial spaces, right? So our robots interact um, with employees 
And, uh, you know, it's typically a retail employee or, or, as I mentioned, maybe an airport employee, a shopping mall employee. These are the kind of environments where employee turnover is extremely high. Um, in fact, in retail environments, the average employee maybe stays in one job for six months or a year. So the robots have to interact with uh, a workforce that's constantly changing. And so it's really critical to have that ease of use that you were referring to. Um, in addition, the robots are working alongside the general public. Um, you know, in a retail environment, you will encounter kids, pets, people focused on their cell phone, um, trying to find exactly the right brand of ketchup that they want. And so being able to operate in that kind of chaotic environment um, is something that we have found um, is really a key differentiator for helping that adoption happen at scale. You work with uh, huge retail uh, chains and very focused on this industry. And how do you see the retail industry evolving around robots? Uh, how it's going to we'll go forward? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so we're in the infancy, um, as probably everyone is aware, when it comes to autonomous mobile robots in uh, commercial public spaces. Uh, we know that robots have been around for decades in industrial space. Uh, you know, example of like a welding robot in an auto manufacturing plant. Um, many of us probably have a robot in our own home cleaning the floor. Um, but what we don't see yet in a major uh, scalable way is robots in those public spaces. And that's really the area where we're focusing today. And so when it comes to the future of retail, it's really these technology advancements that have come in computer vision, um, in autonomous navigation, that are unlocking new applications inside retail. Um, so robotic floor care, it's a great place for uh, these commercial environments to start and for retailers to start. Uh, you know, the, the floor care application is fairly simple from a, an integration perspective. It's not tied into, um, you know, the core operation of a retail environment. But where I see the future going is for these autonomous mobile robots to more and more get into those applications that are at the heart of retail operations. So, you know, what we see today with the applications that we offer is not just that autonomous floor care, but also that autonomous shelf health robot that's driving around and finding those out of stocks, finding where price labels need to be updated. That's the next step. Beyond that, we can see robots continuing to really help augment that labor force that's in such short supply, helping with stocking the shelves, helping with doing order fulfillment. Um, one of the huge trends, of course, during COVID and beyond is omni-channel fulfillment. Uh, people not just going to the stores to buy things, but buy online, pick up in store, or home delivery. And these kinds of new channels of buying, they require increased labor today during a time where labor is less and less available. Um, and so we, as a society, really need this autonomy and these autonomous mobile robots to fill that gap as retailers need to fulfill in all of these new ways with a small and shrinking workforce. Yes, this is interesting because uh, previously you were mentioning that, for example, uh, in Japan and Korea, they, they, they have uh, the, the trend of feeling uh, of, of having robots like to fill some uh, um, um, some uh, kind of jobs is very common right now and it's starting to happen more in the US right yeah you know I think to a large extent demographic changes are really driving the demand for this kind of autonomy um, you know what we see in some other economies in the world they're ahead of us in this demographic change of falling birth rates right, population decline. Um, certainly that's been an ongoing trend in Japan and in Korea, as you reference. Um, it's happening in Western Europe to a certain extent as well. We see here in the US, the labor force participation rate has declined. Um, it was at a peak of around 66% uh, pre-COVID. It's now, I think, back to around 63%. So we've lost about 3% of the labor force. Um, and that trend really is not going back up. It hasn't recovered since COVID. And so it just illustrates the need for autonomous mobile robots and for automation in general 
to help us maintain our standard of living, despite the fact that the workforce is shrinking. So uh, what are the implications of these developments in, for the future of uh, human robot, human uh, robot collaboration? Yeah, it's a great question, and it's something that we're really focused on because of um, you know the concentration of our technology in these open to the public spaces. So human robot interaction is something that we spend a lot of time focusing on. As I mentioned prior, the robots operate around uh, employees who uh, you know probably haven't been in their job for very long, right? So it requires a technology on the worker side that's very easy to adopt, very intuitive, um, quick to understand how to use it, but then also with the consumer, um, the way the robot navigates around someone who is just minding their own business, doing their shopping, is a very important factor in the adoption of the machine. Uh, for our customers who are the retailers, we want to make sure that they're delivering a great experience for their customers, the shopper, the consumer. And uh, if the robot is able to navigate in a, in a smooth way, in a friendly way, in a way that gives confidence to the general public, this really helps to unlock the growth of this really necessary technology. Well, yesterday we had a panel with Geoffrey Hinton and, well, the godfather of AI, and he talked uh, a lot about uh, job uh, displacement and, of course, uh, how I'm going to bring this, this question because everybody wants to know about it. And I wasn't so glad to, to hear that maybe for journalists it won't be good. <laughs> but... Um, how are you addressing this, uh, this team about job displacement due to, to AI and robotics and the need of upskilling? Yeah, it's, it's a great question and extremely topical, certainly something that we think about a lot. Um, you know, what is the future of labor in a world of, of automation? In our particular case, if I answer just for the industries that we address, we're really automating jobs that our customers are having a hard time filling. Um, so from where we sit in our particular lens, we're not taking jobs away. We're doing jobs that otherwise are not getting done. So an example with like on the floor care side, as an example, you know, if it takes a team of three people overnight to clean a typical grocery store, you know, it's usually very hard to get three people to show up for that job reliably every night you might only get one or two people showing up. And so what that means today without robotics is that the store is simply dirtier. And so when you augment that team with robotics, you're not taking away a job. You're allowing that team to do their job to the fullest. You're ensuring that the store is actually cleaned as if you were fully staffed. And so that's a very specific lens for us um, on the floor care side. On the shelf scanning side, it's a fairly similar story um, we're doing a job that really isn't possible for a human to do practically, right? The idea of going up and down every aisle of a store and checking to make sure every single price label is accurate, it's simply not a job that a human can practically do. Um, and so in the case of the applications that we're targeting today, it's really not about replacing human labor, it's about augmenting human labor. At the same time, I acknowledge that um, the overall trend outside of our niche, you know, certainly it's, it's going to be different in different industries. And, you know, particularly with, with what we're doing and being good ambassadors for autonomy in general beyond our application, is we really want to focus on making that interaction between the robot and the employee really as positive as possible. We want this to be seen by store employees as an opportunity for them to upskill, right? So by creating an intuitive UI, uh, creating a UI that operates in a number of different languages, um, creating a UI that doesn't require expertise in robotics, a novice can use it, and really taking the time to offer the training to store employees so that they can elevate from perhaps being a janitor to being a robot operator or to elevate from being an inventory specialist to being a robot operator that's really using this technology as a tool and using the skills that they learn from us and the training that they learn from us to become an even more skilled worker that works alongside the robot as a robot operator. 
like to, to for example, for a consultancy in, uh, in a sale, uh, for a, a, a person that works, that was working checking prices, can be more focused on the client and the needs. Yeah, and yeah that's, that's a really good point, Danny, as well, which is there are things that humans are very good at, and there are things that robots are very good at, and there's, at least in our world, there's not a whole lot of intersection between those two things. So a person who maybe half of their job was to help customers, uh, you know, I come into the store, I need a recommendation uh, on what I need to buy, and half of their job is, as I mentioned, maybe checking price labels or, you know, making sure that this, the shelf is stocked correctly. It's so much better for the consumer. It's so much better for the employee if the robot can take care of that mundane work and that frees up the employee to really do what people are good at and for the retailer themselves to really provide that differentiated customer service. Um, and so we see that a lot with our customers, uh, with our retailers, right, is that they employ this technology and therefore the store associates are really freed up to spend time interacting with their customers and providing that really amazing customer service that we all crave. I mean, one of the things that was mentioned in a prior panel yesterday is, uh, you know, of course, e-commerce is very popular these days, and it grew tremendously during COVID. But nonetheless, in-store shopping is still the vast majority of retail. People still enjoy, even though all the technology exists today, to simply have everything delivered to your house, people still enjoy to go into the store. And part of the reason, obviously, is to touch and feel the product and the merchandise, but also it's to have that human interaction and to get that consultation. And so if you deploy robots right, this is an opportunity to leverage the value of technology while allowing humans to do their job even better. What are your challenges? <laughs> No shortage of challenges, I think, <laughs> anyone in, in this, robotics and automation. Besides today. everything you mentioned, but uh, your main challenges uh, or limitation. Yeah, so I would say, you know, the main challenges, what we found, you know, we, we started off as a technology company, as you can imagine, a group of uh, PhD neuroscientists using their understanding of the brain to create these models for autonomous mobile robots. And the technology is critical. But the biggest challenge of all is realizing that it's not the technology that drives people, it's people that drive technology. And so as much as we focus on all of the magic of the algorithms for how the machine navigates in its environment, what's equally important is working on the things that we've been discussing now, the training of the employees, the human robot interface, how the technology connects with people, how you enroll people in that change management and get them excited about the future of how humans and robots can work together and each one can bring their expertise into the mix. That's really what we're focused on today. David, thanks so much. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Danny.